And then we get to an article here about Argentina activates international death squads. And this article shows that these, God, wretched, horrible people in, uh, involved in a tremendous amount of torture and maiming and killing of people in uh, Argentina are now, like I say, they're subcontractees. And not only that, but the U.S. is trying to make a regional type of kind of a NATO. It's called SATO, which is a good SATO for SATO, SATO. But anyway, with South Africa taking care of the area in the Indian Ocean and Africa, and Argentina taking care of Central America and South America. In fact, Argentina said they would be glad to come up and help with the El Salvadorian folks, right? That's correct. Uh Argentina, if there's a country in the world that has perfected the art of torture and the art of making people disappear, it is Argentina. Uh, and thousands upon thousands of Argentinians uh, have, have disappeared. And uh, uh, I think that this article demonstrates, and this was an article which we did a lot of research on and which was the result of a lot of press reports which came out in some of them in South Africa itself, of the fact that the, CIA, that the Argentinians had sent some of their more renowned and best known torturers to South Africa because they ha could no longer uh, be active in Argentina, they were so well known. So they sent them to South Africa as part of the diplomatic corps in the Argentine embassy. And they were special uh, in torture. Yes, it remember. Is, go ahead. It is unclear at this point whether they were advising the South Africans who also know a good deal about uh, how to torture people and how to, uh, how to make people die in prison as, to, as they have the highest rate of uh, death of people in, in their prisons. Uh, whether in fact they're training each other is unclear, but uh, certainly they have a good deal of, of sh sharing and common interests uh, involved. We showed the movie on company business, which you, or sections of the movie on company business, which you might remember. This movie showed the complicity of the CIA with torture all around the world. As a matter of fact, there are CIA torture schools in the United States. They bring people over here from various uh, countries abroad, police, military, teach them the very sophisticated ways of torture, then they go back and operate on their own folks back home. And just to make sure that everything goes right, the CIA then has their agents which go down and supervise. They hold clinics, they bring people off the streets and torture them. I mean, it sounds like something which you couldn't even think up out of a sick imagination, but this is what goes on. And the uh, next article in your bulletin for March talks about the Salvadorian deserter who uh, disclosed the Green Beret torture role. This was in the news just recently. And it has actually the transcript and a considerable summary of what actually went on. It showed the Americans supervising and helping out, and they tortured the first person to show that uh, how it should be done. This was a 14-year-old boy and the next person brought in was a 13 year old girl and of course after raping her then they let the El Salvadorians try it and uh, make sure they did it right. It it's a gruesome story and, and I think this is an example of uh, something that the American people are being asked uh, to overlook or to turn a blind eye to that is the brutality of the Salvadoran government. It is not a case of uh, Salvadoran of uh, President Duarte as quote-unquote a moderate person who's trying to stand up to the forces both from left and right. Which the New York uh, Times always says. Exactly. It was in fact the New York Times in a story in January who disclosed the first part of the story which was that the Green Berets, eight of them, were present during a torture session and it was a major story. Uh, uh, strangely it was such a major story but it was on page two of the New York Times rather than on page one. But it was a very big and important story. I would say, however, that uh, uh, one of the reasons, I guess, was that the, the Salvadoran, the member of the Salvadoran army who talked about this, who is now des deserted and who is living in Mexico, uh, he was somewhat intimidated, I guess, by talking to the New York Times. And he's later revealed to the to Mexican media, and that's the transcript in this story, in this article, that the special forces and I should say the U.S. Special Forces was created originally by the CIA, uh, the Special Forces were actually involved in the torture as opposed to standing by observing it.
Lewis? They said they didn't rape the little girl, though. I mean, there is some morality yeah, left. Right. Right. Lewis, how does this torture and all of these CIA covert operations fit into American foreign policy as a whole? You have a couple articles in your current journal about the role of the CIA and these sorts of operations we're talking about within American foreign policy. Could you focus on that for a minute? Well, I, I guess it comes down to the, the whole uh, doctrine that the United States feels it has to uh, keep its role and its sphere of influence or its spheres of influence. Uh, uh, and part of this is putting governments in power and part of it is keeping them in power. Now, there are many governments with whom the United States has been closely mm -hmm. identified around the country who cannot stay in power without massive repression. Uh, and, uh, of course, El Salvador is one. There are many others around the world in all the three continents. Uh, Argentina and South Africa for two. Absolutely. Obvious examples. Uh, South Korea is another example, uh, and the Philippines. Uh, I think... Uh, we have to understand, though, that uh, what, why would the United States do this? Is it simply to keep somebody who is a friend of the United States in power? Um, successive presidents, and it's not just Reagan, and it's not Carter before him, it's successive presidents since, basically since the 50s, since Eisenhower, have uh, been uh, working hand in glove and even have been on camera embracing successive dictators with whom we've been identified. Uh, the most recent example, if you remember, was the case of, uh, of Jimmy Carter embracing the Shah of Iran a few months before he was overthrown on the steps of the White House. Um, I think it's because of the CIA's involvement and, in fact, direction of much of these uh, activities. It's not that the CIA is working uh, on its own, as, as some people suggest, as a rogue elephant. The CIA works directly under the, uh, under the uh, uh, guidance and direction of the chi uh, chief of state, of the president. And, of course, this, this president not only doesn't know, but doesn't want to know every day what the CIA is doing. But the fact of the matter is that, they, that they're doing what the president asked them to do. And the other thing I should just mention quickly is that the CIA carries out these activities to keep the interests of the corporations, U.S. corporations, who have great interests uh, at stake, for example, in South Africa and in all the other countries we've mentioned. That's right. The multinationals value stability above everything else, plus the ability to operate there, keep the economy low as far as wages, and be able to take the riches out of the country. And these right-wing dictatorships let them do that. Of course, there's a point which is reached, that, like in El Salvador, once it gets too far and the people really start and not uh, a revolution, then the multinationals suffer there. And there is a certain level beyond which the U.S., when it becomes publicly known, as opposed to known in the country itself, publicly known in the United States, that the U.S. is so closely identified with such a repressive regime as today in El Salvador, uh, that it finally realizes it has to fish or cut bait. It has to decide whether we continue to support this openly or whether we have to find other ways to support, as, in, as for example, Argentina has now offered, uh, we understand, directly to the United States to be a surrogate for the U.S. in, in, in El Salvador. Also, Honduras is, mm -hmm. is playing that role. This is what's so chilling about this Agents Identities Information Act, that it will cover over the possibility of the media exposing the worst abuses of the CIA which will mean the American people won't know what it's doing. We'll have a secret government, and we will therefore increase the power and the scope of operations of the CIA. Whereas in the past, when there has been media and public focus on CIA operations and excesses, there has been pressure to cut back yes. on the CIA. I think, however, the most uh, threatening part of this is the, is the whole uh, move towards greater and greater secrecy and uh, so that the media will not even have the opportunity to report on this whole area. Uh, it will be illegal almost for a, a journalist, uh, for one of the major media to write or to report 
about intelligence. Uh, in many ways, it, that will just be beyond the pale.